Netflix's Wednesday brings a fresh, fun, new twist to the kooky Adams family that fans have adored for years. Still, there's good and bad everywhere, and Wednesday is no exception. Let's rank every character from good to evil. Let's start with the most evil characters and make our way to the good. Kicking off with our most evil character, we have Joseph Crackstone, the xenophobic founder of the town of Jericho. Crackstone burned all the town's outcasts alive in the meeting house, including Goody Adams' family. While we don't see much of him until the final episode, we see enough to know that he is clearly the most evil character in the show. Moving on, we have Marilyn Thornhill. For most of the season, Thornhill is as plucky, pleasant, and enjoyable as can be. The constantly smiling botany teacher radiates warmth, kindness, and uplifting positivity every time she's on screen. Once it's revealed that Thornhill is actually Laurel Gates, her character instantly shifts from a lovable ally to a loathsome foe. A deeply wicked character in disguise, Gates actually descends from Joseph Crackstone and has been working inside Nevermore to bring down the outcasts rather than help them. She revives Crackstone at the end to slay the outcasts, making her a secret enemy all along. Next up, we have Principal Larissa Weems. While Principal Weems is neither a hero nor a villain, she serves as Wednesday's chief rival at Nevermore. Weems harbors a nasty grudge as Morticia's former roommate at Nevermore, which leads to unpleasant interactions with Wednesday. In addition to being a shady shapeshifter, Weems vows to keep Hyde's gory murder spree a secret to preserve the Academy's reputation allowing innocent victims to die in the process. Mean, manipulative, and menacing, there isn't much to like about Weems' personality or actions. While she does attempt to redeem herself in the end by using her shapeshifting for good, by then it's far too late. As the rough, gruff, surly town sheriff, Donovan Galpin is also complicit in covering up the murders outside Nevermore. He knows something is a foul, but publicly states a wild animal is responsible. Constantly suspicious of Wednesday and her friends, what really makes Sheriff Galpin so unpleasant is the way he treats his son, Tyler. In addition to treating his son poorly, Galpin's most loathsome trait is keeping the harmful secret about Tyler's Hyde mother a secret, which all but ruins his son's life. For a man charged with protecting the town and keeping his son safe, Galpin fails badly and showcases bad manners in the process. While he shows moments of compassion and sympathy, especially after Gomez Adams is vindicated, his immoral work practices keep him on the evil side of our list. Rounding out our evil characters is Dr. Valerie Kinbot. Now, she isn't necessarily evil, but we don't know enough about her to consider her good either. While we could assume that her role as a therapist equates to a compassionate person wanting to help people, it's hard to believe it when she can't seem to connect with any of her patients. In the final confrontation, we hear Kinbot dismiss Wednesday in a manner that's definitely not appropriate for a psychiatrist speaking with patients. Even though Wednesday is entirely out of line with her accusations, Kinbot is dismissive at times, and though she does not deserve her untimely death, it's a bit hard to care for her. Let's shift to the good characters now. Starting off, we have Tyler Galpin. I know, let us explain. He's one of the few characters who is able to break through Wednesday's misanthropic attitude and forge a tender bond with her even though he's introduced as a normie. Tyler's undoubtedly been through hell and back after the loss of his mother and upbringing via his father's questionable parenting skills. But Tyler, as a Hyde monster in Laurel's puppet, is detestable. As it turns out, pretty much everything he becomes is entirely against his will. Laurel uses his grief to manipulate him into finding solace with her, and then uses torture tactics to turn him entirely ruthless. Still, intentional or not, it's hard to overlook the amount of bloodshed he's responsible for. Moving up, we have Pugsley Adams and Uncle Fester. Because the series takes place primarily at Nevermore Academy, we don't get to see much of the Adams family. As a result, we don't get to know a lot about Pugsley and Uncle Fester. Pugsley is entirely likable because of how boldly he adores his sister. Uncle Fester is a family man through and through, and revives Thing with his electrical powers. 
Undoubtedly, they both mean well. While Morticia Adams may come across as distant with her daughter, it actually stems from a sort of tough love approach, allowing Wednesday the agency to come to everything on her own terms. It's also evident from day one that all Morticia wants is for Wednesday to feel cherished and understood wherever she is. She holds a profound grudge against Garrett Gates for his viewpoints and actions towards Outcast which ultimately tells us that she's a character who cares about those who are different. Sometimes, the titular character of a series isn't always the most likable, but that's not the case with Wednesday Adams. Once viewers get past her mean-spirited sarcasm, Wednesday inevitably becomes the most compelling character on the show. While misunderstood and grim as can be, her slow evolution from dark to light while solving the Nevermore murders comes into sharp focus as the season unfolds. Though she is not evil in any sense, she is selfish at times. She'll manipulate others to pursue her own goals, such as tricking Enid and Tyler into helping her get to the Gates Mansion. Although her personality is prickly, Wednesday's moral center allows her to overcome her hurtful words and take heroic action that speaks much louder to her underlying character. Deep down, Wednesday has more good in her than she ever knew. Next on our list of good characters is Xavier Thorpe. While mysterious, it's not really his fault that he appears to be somewhat creepy at times. Xavier is a misunderstood artist, which leads many to wrongly believe he's the killer based on his grisly paintings. After being falsely accused by Wednesday, he quickly lets go of any animosity and remains on Wednesday's side and proves to be a real friend. If forgiving someone for getting you arrested doesn't speak to your character, I don't know what will. Moving further up our list of good, we have Bianca Barclay. Through her treatment of Wednesday and her past relationship with Xavier, the series initially frames Bianca as a villain. However, any character who's willing to grow and become a better version of themselves is always worthy of being good. Bianca swears to disavow her nature and refuses to use siren calls like her mother used to. After warning students of Crackstone's return, she puts her differences with Wednesday aside and helps her defeat Crackstone once and for all. Earning our bronze medal of good is Thing. Now a real case can be made that Thing is the most good character on the show. Thing is constantly there for Wednesday whenever she's in a bind. It picks out Wednesday's dress for the school dance, throws her a surprise birthday party, and sacrifices its life to rescue her and her friends' lives time and time again. Beyond Thing's commendable actions every step of the way, Thing is smart, funny, compassionate, and easily one of the main reasons to watch Wednesday in the first place. Our silver medal of good goes to Gomez Adams. Gomez is just as obsessed and in love with his wife as the day they met. The compliments are never-ending, clever, and remarkably fresh. The man worships the ground Morticia walks on, sings to her, and would die for her in a heartbeat. What's not to love? He even takes the blame of murdering Garrett Gates, protecting Morticia, even though it was technically self-defense. Furthermore, he's a man willing to forgive and open every piece of himself up so long as his family is happy. Not only choosing to appreciate them as they are, but encouraging all their quips. Our gold medal of good goes to Enid Sinclair. Whether being stood up by Ajax, disappointing her parents by failing to wolf out, or just being her fun-loving frenetic self, Enid is the most sympathetic and enjoyable character to be around, bridging the gap between normies and outcasts like no other. Enid allows everyone to just be as they are. Her rage towards the Hyde monster finally turns her into a werewolf and brings a great fight out of her, ultimately to protect Wednesday. Enid's utter horror and downright heartbreak at the end when she thinks Wednesday is dead is almost as crushing as the decision to hug her, even though hugging is not how they do things. Like the pure sunshine that she is, her compassion and empathy shine exceptionally in the final episode as she stands steadfast by Wednesday's side. In a school where there are genuinely very few people Wednesday can trust, Enid is at the top of the list of the Great Ones. Though the show casts itself as a dark and evil series, there are surprisingly more good characters than one might initially think. Let us know down in the comments if you agree with our list.
please consider subscribing. It's the best way to support our channel. Thanks for watching.